So in, in today's lecture, we will learn um, about batching, sampling, and different training or learning paradigms. So uh, first, let's get started with a reminder here. So the batch-based training that we have in deep learning. So to train a model, uh, we aim, of course, to optimize an objective uh, loss function. And uh, through the optimization, we are able to get our optimal parameters W, so the optimal parameters of our neural network, whether it's a deep learning network or a GNN network. So to do the training, to perform the training, we can adopt one of the following uh, three training strategies, okay? So the first one is the stochastic gradient descent. So stochastic gradient descent, uh, we what we do basically, we uh, take each point, so this is a training point, and for each data point, we calculate the gradient of the loss at this point, all right, at this point, and then we update the weights. So what happens is that we're going to update the weight for each point individually. So we will loop over or iterate over all points one by one, and every time, each time, we will update our weights one by one, okay? So this is the uh, first uh, um, training paradigm where we do individual or independent sample training. Uh, and you randomly, actually you can randomly select this training sample. So there are different ways of doing this. You can loop over all training samples if you have a, a small data set, but if you have many samples, you can randomly draw your individual points and you calculate or up update the parameters based on the randomly sampled points, okay? So uh, now the stochastic gradient descent has um, different properties. So first, uh, in, uh, it's a single point training. Uh, so in single point training, we call it also stochastic training. Uh, each update is based on the gradient calculated from a single randomly chosen data point, all right? So here what we have, we have frequent updates. So the parameters W are updated frequently after every single point. So W, uh, the parameters of the network will be less stable uh, because we will have every time you put in a sample, you, you're going to change the direction of your, your, your W vector, your final parameter vector. And this will destabilize your uh, training or the learning behavior of your model. And how can we see that? That actually reflects in the loss. So here you can see in the uh, stochastic gradient descent, the loss function right here, okay? So the loss function, uh, it zigzags a lot. There is a lot of there's a change of directionality, all like a constant change. So this, it converges to the optimum, but it takes a longer time because, because of this zigzagging behavior and the fact that we are training on each sample individually, okay? So uh, we will have noisy updates. So the updates can uh, be noisy. So this will uh, lead to what we call an erratic convergence behavior. So as you can see here uh, in this figure, the purple uh, line, right? And uh, the computational efficiency is also bad. It's not that good because you're updating the parameters for each point individually. So this update will uh, is computationally expensive. So it's going uh, to be inefficient and the overhead, the compute overhead will be high for uh, the stochastic uh, gradient descent implemented in this way, okay? Now, a different option or a second or a better alternative, uh, well, better, we will discuss that, whether it's better, it's a, a better option or not, is the, the batch gradient descent. So what is the batch gradient descent? So in the batch gradient descent, uh, we use the whole data set to calculate the average gradient, okay? So the gradient, is calculated for the whole data and uh, we update the W only once. So basically we take the whole training data, we calculate the average gradient and we update the weights of our neural network across all layers, right? Only once, okay? So this is, you know, one single batch, one single iteration defines an epoch and then we're going to move 
forward and reiterate over and over again, okay? So, but we'll take the, the whole data set as a bulk and calculate the average gradient for the whole set as you guys can see here, okay? So now what are the advantages or disadvantages of this method, the batch gradient descent? So there is a full usage of the data set. So in batch training, uh, the entire data set is used for each training iteration. Okay, so the model parameters are updated only once per epoch. So here an epoch is an, a complete pass through the entire tra training set, data set, and here we have a complete pass. So one batch is one epoch in this case, okay? So now for the memory requirements, the entire data set needs to be loaded into the memory. All right, so this means that we will have, you know, we need to, uh, you know, store everything. So it's highly memory intensive. It uh, increases the memory usage and it could be impractical uh, for a large data sets. So you can get out of memory error, uh, struggling to load the whole data if you have millions of samples and, you know, thousands and thousands of features. Uh, so this is impractical. Now, in terms of stability, uh, it provides stable error gradient and convergence. So we have a better convergence and stability compared to the uh, compared to the stochastic gradient descent. Uh, and this is because we are using the entire data set. So the update will be more consistent because every time we are updating the parameters using the whole data set. So this parameter doesn't depend on a point with different kind of a feature vector with a different kind of directionality, right? So a feature, a vector has a direction, right? So in a, in a D-dimensional space, in an RD. So because we're doing this for the mean direction, we're taking the mean direction of all training points, right? So this is, for example, let's say, well, the mean direction here maybe would be around here, okay? So we're taking the mean direction, uh, then this will allow us to better, um, you know, like uh, update the, uh, parameters in a more stable and controlled and co consistent uh, way, I would say, okay? So uh, computational efficiency. So it's still computationally inefficient because we need to process the entire data set before making a single update. So this is uh, computationally expensive. And also there is a risk of overfitting because you're using the whole data uh, at once and you're calculating the average. So the model is exposed to the whole data set um, in the same order. So there is no randomness for regularization, which means, you know, we don't randomly sample uh, particular uh, training points like in stochastic gradient descent. We don't uh, use a subset. We only use the whole data set. So it's kind of, you know, biased towards the data set and it may overfit the data. OK, so now if you look at this diagram here, this plot of the uh, loss function uh, contours, we can see that when we use the uh, mini batch, so uh, sorry, the batch base gradient, which is in blue. So the batch gradient here is so, all right. So let me change the color of this one. So batch gradient, you can see you have a more stable and faster convergence in this case. So because you're you're using the whole entire data set, as I said, to update. So your updates will not change a lot because the, the average direction will not kind of randomly change. So the average direction may change a little bit, uh, you know, like of the gradient, but it will not kind of oscillate uh, and be shattered across different directions. Okay, so there is more stability there, even if there is a, a tiny epsilon change here of your average gradient, it won't be kind of, you know, uh, dramatic. Okay. So now let's look at the last one. So the final one is a trade-off between these two solutions, the stochastic gradient descent and the batch, the whole data base gradient descent. So in this solution, we have what we call a mini batch uh, gradient descent. And in this uh, mini batch gradient descent here, so Let's look at this together. So I'm gonna move this right here. So it's a bit slow. Let's see, All right. So in the um, mini batch gradient descent, so basically we divide the data into different sets. Uh, and for every batch, uh, batch, sorry, for every batch, for each set, 
uh, we calculate the average gradient. So we will calculate the average gradient for that particular batch and then update using the gradient of the training samples inside the batch. So any training sample here, we will calculate their gradients and then we'll take the average gradient right here, okay? And this will be the gradient of the loss of the whole batch, all right? So it's an average across the uh, of the gradients of all these points within each batch. Now, this is a trade-off because now we're dividing the data into subsets and we're still, we're, we still have some variability because every time you have a different set, the distribution of the data will vary. So maybe here, the distribution of the features will look like this, but for these you know, uh, three samples, you may have slightly a different distribution, okay? So uh, it creates kind of variability or drawing from the final, let's say if this is the ground truth distribution of the whole data, uh, or maybe something that looks like this, all right? So you're, you're, you're trying to kind of, you know, model different uh, drawings or samplings from the ground truth distribution by doing this kind of clustering. So you, this allows us to uh, simulate different scenarios of data distributions, and the model will learn from a diverse data. So this diversifies, you know, uh, uh, diversifies, uh, the data inputs, which means when you have inputs, it means, you know, distribution, right? Uh, and all uh, um, its kind of its properties, all right? So let's look at this together. So now the mini batch. So first, uh, we take a subset of data sets. So the mini batch training involves dividing the data set into smaller subsets. We call them mini batches. And the parameters W are updated for each mini batch uh, independently, okay? And then once we complete uh, the iteration of uh, across um, all mini batches, then that is considered as one epoch of training, all right? So we have more frequent updates than batch training, but less frequent updates than the stochastic single point training. And in terms of memory, um, it requires, it is less memory intensive uh, than the batch gradient descent, the second option, and it is feasible for larger data sets. And in terms of convergence, we have balanced convergence because it strikes a balance between the stable convergence of batch training that we have here. So we have a nice stable convergence, right, uh, in this diagram, and then, uh, the faster fluctuation versus the you know the fluctuate fluctuating slow uh, convergence of the stochastic training. So you can see in this example when we have the mini batch. So the mini batch uh, gradient it, it it has some zigzagging, but it's more stable compared to the uh, stochastic gradient descent. Uh, it is faster, converges faster uh, than uh, stochastic gradient descent, but it's a bit slower than the batch-based training, okay? So it kind of strikes a balance between both extremes. And yeah, so that's mini batch uh, gradient descent. Now, in terms of computational efficiency, it is uh, more computationally efficient uh, compared at least to, you know, to um, the, the both options one and two, because here we can parallelize, we can consider, uh, we can calculate the gradient, do the updates of the W, in parallel for all bat batches simultaneously. So these could be easily computed using GPUs. And it has a regularization effect. So this is a very nice uh, property to have. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, the variability in the mini batch samples, the variability in the distribution can introduce some noise into the training process. And it acts as a form of a regularization. So there is some randomness there. There is a shift of distributions of the training data. So every time you update the W, it's going to look at a particular distribution here. It will be affected by a particular distribution. And that variation will create uh, um, a better generalizability power of the model uh, parameters to optimize, okay? Now there is a hyperparameter here, which is the size of the mini batch. So the size of the mini batch, uh, it can affect the performance uh, and the efficiency of the training. So if you have, 
you know, when you set the size to the whole data set, we go back to option two. Uh, and if you set the size of the batch to one, it means you go back to option one, right? The, the single point based training. So you want to strike a balance between these and fixing the size, how many samples, what is the size of your cluster here is important. So you can for example, take, you know, uh, five points, you can take three points. So how to actually fix that? It's still an ongoing um, area of research. All right. So this was, you know, batch-based training or optimization or gradient descent using three different approaches.